A subscriber identity module or subscriber identification module is an integrated circuit that securely stores the international mobile subscriber identity and the related key used to identify and authenticate subscribers on mobile telephony devices. A SIM circuit is embedded into a removable plastic card. This plastic card is called a SIM card, and can be transferred between different mobile devices. A SIM card follows certain smart card standards. SIM cards were first made the same size as a credit card. The development of physically smaller mobile devices prompted the development of smaller SIM cards where the quantity of cards surrounding the integrated circuit is reduced. A SIM card contains its unique serial number, international mobile subscriber identity, security authentication and ciphering information, temporary information related to the local network, a list of the services the user has access to and two passwords, a personal identification number for ordinary use and a personal unblocking code for PIN unlocking. History the SIM was initially specified by the European Telecommunications Standards Institute in the specification with the number TS 11.11. This specification describes the physical and logical behavior of the SIM. With the development of UMTS the specification work was partially transferred to 3GPP. 3GPP is now responsible for the further development of applications like SIM and USIM and ETSI for the further development of the physical card UICC. The first SIM card was made in 1991 by Munich smart card maker Guy Second de Vriant, who sold the first 300 SIM cards to the Finnish wireless network operator Redilinja. Design There are three operating voltages for SIM cards, 5V. 3V and 1.8V. The operating voltage of the majority of SIM cards launched before 1998 was 5V. SIM cards produced subsequently are compatible with 3V and 5V. Modern cards support 5V, 3V and 1.8V. Modern SIM cards allow applications to be loaded when the SIM is in use by the subscriber. These applications communicate with the handset or a server using SIM application toolkit which was initially specified by 3GPP and TS 11.14. ETSI and 3GPP maintain the SIM specifications. The main specifications are, ETSI TS 100-223, ETSI TS 100-241, ETSI TS 100-588, and ETSI TS 131-111. SIM toolkit applications were initially written in native code using proprietary APIs. In order to allow interoperability of the applications, Java Card was taken as the solution of choice by ETSI. Additional standards and specifications of interest are maintained by Global Platform. Data SIM cards store network specific information used to authenticate and identify subscribers on the network. The most important of these are the ICC ID, IMSI, authentication key, local area identity and operator specific emergency number. The SIM also stores other carrier specific data such as the SMSE number, service provider name, service dialing numbers, advice of charge parameters and value added service applications. SIM cards can come in various data capacities from 32 kilobytes to at least 128 kilobytes. All allow a maximum of 250 contacts to be stored on the SIM, but while the 32 kilobytes has room for 33 mobile network codes or network identifiers, the 64 kilobytes version has room for 80 MNCs. This is used by network operators to store information on preferred networks, mostly used when the SIM is not in its home network but is roaming. The network operator that issued the SIM card can use this to have a SIM card connect to a preferred network in order to make use of the best price and or quality network instead of having to pay the network operator that the SIM card saw first. This does not mean that a SIM card can only connect to a maximum of 33 or 80 networks, but this means that the SIM card issuer can only specify up to that number of preferred networks. If ASIM is outside these preferred networks it will use the first or best available network. ICC ID Each SIM is internationally identified by its integrated circuit card identifier. 
ICCIDs are stored in the SIM cards and are also engraved or printed on the SIM card body during a process called personalization. The ICCID is defined by the ITUT recommendation E118 as the primary account number. Its layout is based on ISO IEC 7812. According to E118, the number is up to 22 digits long, including a single check digit calculated using the LUN algorithm. However, the GSM Phase 1 defined the ICCID length as 10 octets with operator specific structure. The number is composed of the following subparts issuer identification number, maximum of 7 digits, major industry identifier, 2 fixed digits, 89 for telecommunication purposes. Country code, 1 a euro 3 digits, as defined by ITUT recommendation E164. Issuer identifier, 1 a euro 4 digits. Individual account identification, individual account identification number. Its length is variable, but every number under 1 IIN will have the same length. Check digit, single digit calculated from the other digits using the LUN algorithm. With the GSM Phase 1 specification using 10 octets into which ICCID is stored as packed BCD, the data field has room for 20 digits with hexadecimal digit F being used as filler when necessary. In practice, this means that on GSM SIM cards there are 20 digit and 19 digit ICCIDs in use, depending upon the issuer. However, a single issuer always uses the same size for its ICCIDs. To confuse matters more, SIM factories seem to have varying ways of delivering electronic copies of SIM personalization data sets. Some data sets are without the ICCID checksum digit, others are with the digit. As required by E118, the ITU regularly publishes a list of all internationally assigned IIN codes in its operational bulletins. The most recent list, as of November 2013, is in Operational Bulletin No. 1040. International Mobile Subscriber Identity SIM cards are identified on their individual operator networks by a unique International Mobile Subscriber Identity. Mobile network operators connect mobile phone calls and communicate with their market SIM cards using their IMSIs. The format is, the first three digits represent the mobile country code. The next two or three digits represent the mobile network code. Three-digit MNC codes are allowed by E212 but are mainly used in the United States and Canada. The next digits represent the mobile subscriber identification number. Normally there will be ten digits but would be fewer in the case of a three-digit MNC or if national regulations indicate that the total length of the IMSI should be less than 15 digits. Digits are different from country to country. Authentication key, the NE is a 128-bit value used in authenticating the SIMs on the mobile network. Each SIM holds a unique key assigned to it by the operator during the personalization process. The key is also stored in a database on the carrier's network. The SIM card is designed not to allow the key to be obtained using the smart card interface. Instead, the SIM card provides a function, run GSM algorithm, that allows the phone to pass data to the SIM card to be signed with a key. This, by design, makes usage of the SIM card mandatory unless the key can be extracted from the SIM card, or the carrier is willing to reveal the key. In practice, the GSM cryptographic algorithm for computing SRES2 from the key has certain vulnerabilities that can allow the extraction of the key from a SIM card and the making of a duplicate SIM card. Authentication process, when the mobile equipment starts up, it obtains the international mobile subscriber identity from the SIM card, and passes this to the mobile operator requesting access and authentication. The mobile equipment may have to pass a PIN to the SIM card before the SIM card will reveal this information. The operator network searches its database for the incoming IMSI and its associated key. The operator network then generates a random number and signs it with the key associated with the IMSI, computing another number known as signed response 1. The operator network then sends the RAN to the mobile equipment, which passes it to the SIM card. The SIM card signs it with its key, 
producing SRES2, which it gives to the mobile equipment along with encryption key KC. The mobile equipment passes SRES2 onto the operator network. The operator network then compares its computed SRES1 with the computed SRES2 that the mobile equipment returned. If the two numbers match, the SIM is authenticated and the mobile equipment is granted access to the operator's network. KC is used to encrypt all further communications between the mobile equipment and the network. Location Area Identity The SIM stores network state information, which is received from the Location Area Identity. Operator networks are divided into location areas, each having a unique LAI number. When the device changes locations, it stores the new LAI to the SIM and sends it back to the operator network with its new location. If the device is power cycled, it will take data off the SIM, and search for the prior LAI. SMS messages and contacts, most SIM cards will orthogonally store a number of SMS messages and phone book contacts. The contacts are stored in simple name and number pairs, entries containing multiple phone numbers and additional phone numbers will usually not be stored on the SIM card. When a user tries to copy such entries to a SIM the handset software will break them up into multiple entries, discarding any information that is not a phone number. The number of contacts and messages stored depends on the SIM. Early models would store as few as 5 messages and 20 contacts while modern SIM cards can usually store over 250 contacts. Formats SIM cards have been made smaller over the years. Functionality is independent of format. Full size SIMs were followed by mini SIMs, micro SIMs, and nano SIMs. SIMs are also made to be embedded in devices. Full size SIM The first to appear was the full size or 1FF, the size of a credit card. Mini SIM The mini SIM card has the same contact arrangement as the full size SIM card and is normally supplied within a full size card carrier attached by a number of linking pieces. This arrangement allows such a card to be used in a device requiring a full-size card, or in a device requiring a mini SIM card after breaking the linking pieces. Micro SIM, the later 3FF card or micro SIM cards have the same thickness and contact arrangements, but the length and width are further reduced as shown in the table above. The micro SIM was developed by the European Telecommunications Standards Institute along with SCP, 3GPP, 3GPP2, ARIB, GSM Association, Global Platform, Liberty Alliance, and the Open Mobile Alliance for the purpose of fitting into devices too small for a mini SIM card. The form factor was mentioned in the December 1998 3GPP SMG9 UMTS Working Party which is the standard setting body for GSM SIM cards, and the form factor was agreed upon in late 2003. The micro SIM was designed for backward compatibility. The major issue for backward compatibility was the contact area of the chip. Retaining the same contact area allows the micro SIM to be compatible with the prior, larger SIM readers through the use of plastic cutout surrounds. The SIM was also designed to run at the same speed as the prior version. The same size and positions of pins resulted in numerous how-to tutorials and YouTube video with detailed instructions how to cut a mini SIM card to micro SIM size with a sharp knife or scissors. The chairman of EPSCP, Dr. Klaus Feder, said, with this decision, we can see that ETSI has responded to a market need from ETSI customers, but additionally there is a strong desire not to invalidate, overnight, the existing interface, nor reduce the performance of the cards. EPSCP expect to finalize the technical realization for the third form factor at the next SCP plenary meeting, scheduled for February 2004. Micro SIM cards were introduced by various mobile service providers for the launch of the original iPad, and later for smartphones, from April 2010. The iPhone 4 was the first smartphone to use a micro SIM card in June 2010. Later the Samsung Galaxy S3 per second 4, various Nokia Lumia handsets, the Nokia N9 and the Sony Xperia RIA followed. Nano SIM, on October 11, 2012, 
mobile service providers began selling the NanoSIM or 4FF to their mobile users in various countries. The NanoSIM measures 12.3 AA, A8.8 AA, A0.67 ohm and reduces the previous format to the contact area while maintaining the existing contact arrangements. A small rim of isolating material is left around the contact area to avoid short circuits with the socket. The 0.7 ohm thickness of the nanosim is about 15% less than its predecessor. 4FF can be put into adapters for use with devices taking 2FF or 3FF SIMs. The iPhone 5, released in September 2012, was the first device to use a nano SIM card. Embedded SIM SIMs for M2M applications are available in a surface mount SON8 package which may be soldered directly onto a circuit board. The surface mount format provides the same electrical interface as the full size, 2FF and 3FF SIM cards, but is soldered to the circuit board as part of the manufacturing process. Indiana, M2M, applications where there is no requirement to change the SIM card, this avoids the requirement for a connector, improving reliability and security. Security In July 2013, it was revealed that Carson Knoll, a cryptographer and security researcher from Senior Labs, had discovered vulnerabilities in some SIM cards that enabled them to be hacked to provide root access. The cards affected use the data encryption standard which, despite its age, is still used by some operators. Cards using the more recent advanced encryption standard or triple DES standards are not affected. Among other risks, the hack could lead to the phone being remotely cloned or allow payment credentials from the SIM to be stolen. Further details of the research were to be given at Black Hat on July 31, 2013. In response, the International Telecommunication Union said that the development was hugely significant, and that it would be contacting its members. Developments, when GSM was already in use, the specifications were further developed and enhanced with functionality like SMS, GPRS, etc. These development steps are referred as releases by ETSI. Within these development cycles, the SIM specification was enhanced as well, new voltage classes, formats and files were introduced. In GSM only times, the SIM consisted of the hardware and the software. With the advent of UMTS this naming was split, the SIM was now an application and hence only software. The hardware part was called UICC. This split was necessary because UMTS introduced a new application, the Universal Subscriber Identity Module. The USIM brought, among other things, security improvements like the mutual authentication and longer encryption keys and an improved address book. SIM cards in developed countries are today usually UICCs containing at least a SIM and a USIM application. This configuration is necessary because older GSM-only handsets are solely compatible with the SIM application and some UMTS security enhancements do rely on the USIM application. The equivalent of SIM on CDMA networks is the AUIM. A virtual SIM is a mobile phone number provided by a mobile network operator that does not require a SIM card to connect phone calls to a user's mobile phone. Usage in mobile phone standards, the use of SIM cards is mandatory in GSM devices. The satellite phone networks Iridium, Furia and Inmersat's BGAN also use SIM cards. Sometimes, these SIM cards work in regular GSM phones and also allow GSM customers to roam in satellite networks by using their own SIM card in a satellite phone. Japan's 2GPDC system also specifies a SIM, but this has never been implemented commercially. The specification of the interface between the mobile equipment and the SIM is given in the RCRS TD27 Annex 4. The Subscriber Identity Module Expert Group was a committee of specialists assembled by the European Telecommunications Standards Institute to draw up the specifications for interfacing between smart cards and mobile telephones. In 1994, the name SIMEG was changed to SMG9. Japan's current and next generation cellular systems are based on WCDMA and CDMA 2000 and all use SIM cards. However, 
Japanese CDMA 2000 based phones are locked to the AUIM they are associated with and thus, the cards are not interchangeable with other Japanese CDMA 2000 handsets. CDMA based devices originally did not use a removable card, and the service for these phones bound to a unique identifier contained in the handset itself. This is most prevalent in operators in the Americas. The first publication of the TIA 820 standard in 2000 defined the removable user identity module. Card based CDMA devices are most prevalent in Asia. The equivalent of a SIM and UMTS is called the Universal Integrated Circuit Card, which runs a USIM application. The UICC is still colloquially called a SIM card. SIM and carriers, the SIM card introduced a new and significant business opportunity for MVNOSA a Euro mobile virtual network operator a Euro, who lease capacity from one of the network operators rather than owning or operating a cellular telecoms network and only provide a SIM card to their customers. MVNOs first appeared in Denmark, Hong Kong, Finland and the UK. Today they exist in over 50 countries, including most of Europe, United States, Canada, Mexico, Australia and parts of Asia, and account for approximately 10% of all mobile phone subscribers around the world. On some networks, the mobile phone is locked to its carrier SIM card, meaning that the phone only works with SIM cards from the specific carrier. This is more common in markets where mobile phones are heavily subsidized by the carriers, and the business model depends on the customer staying with the service provider for a minimum term. SIM cards that are issued by providers with an associated contract are called SIM-only deals. Common examples are the GSM networks in the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK and Poland. Many businesses offer the ability to remove the SIM lock from a phone, effectively making it possible to then use the phone on any network by inserting a different SIM card. Mostly, GSM and 3G mobile handsets can easily be unlocked and used on any suitable network with any SIM card. In countries where the phones are not subsidized, for example, India, Israel and Belgium, all phones are unlocked. Where the phone is not locked to its SIM card, the users can easily switch networks by simply replacing the SIM card of one network with that of another while using only one phone. This is typical, for example, among users who may want to optimize their carrier's traffic by different tariffs to different friends on different networks, or when traveling internationally. See also, International Mobile Equipment Identity, GSM 03.48, SIM Cloning, SIM Connector, IP Multimedia Services Identity Module, WSIM, Mobile Equipment Identifier, VMAC, Mobile Signature, Single Wire Protocol, SIM Application Toolkit, Mobile Broadband, Tethering, Smart Card, SIM Only Deals, References External Links, ETSI Smart Card Standards GSM 11.11 A Euro Specification of the Subscriber Identity Module A Euro Mobile Equipment Interface GSM 11.14 A Euro Specification of the SIM Application Toolkit for the Subscriber Identity Module A Euro Mobile Equipment Interface GSM 03.48 A Euro Specification of the Security Mechanisms for SIM Application Toolkit GSM 03.48 Java API A Euro API and realization of GSM 03.48 in Java, ITUTE 118 A Euro The International Telecommunication Charge Card 2006 ITUT